Hello, my friends. Welcome to Magpie Reads. I'm Lindy, and I have got exciting news. There is a brand new readathon happening in September. It's called Framed in September. It's an art related readathon. It's the brainchild of Elizabeth of Bouquins and Books, and she has invited four other booktubers to co-host with her. So those people are Greg of Another Bibliophile Reads, Hannah of Hannah's Books, uh, Heather Greg, and, and me. So I hope that you will join us in our love of art by reading just one book focused on art. That's all you have to do to participate. We do have uh, three prompts actually. So prompt number one is read a book, fiction or nonfiction, focused on art. Prompt number two is experience art. So what we're talking about here is go out to a museum or an art gallery or uh, see some live music or attend a live performance, dance, theater, something like that. Experience it, then tell us about it. And our bonus prompt, so number three, is create art or tell us about a work of art that is uh, meaningful to you in some way. So if you are a booktuber, you have a channel, you can do it that way. Uh, for the many of you who are loyal viewers of booktube, use our uh, comments fields to tell us about any of these prompts and how you have filled them. We really would love, love, love to hear from you and have you participate in Framed in September. Now, does anybody need recommendations? I've got plenty. I'm just going to give you a few, just a very few here right now, starting with a novel, All the Color in the World by C.S. Richardson. This is a Canadian novel that follows the life of one man who was born in about 1920. He wanted to be an artist. He ended up becoming an art historian and uh, was a soldier in the Second World War. Uh, the many things that affected him in his life, uh, he was able to cope and bear because of his love of art. And so um, art and color are throughout this gorgeous novel written in fragments which include um, short nonfiction segments like about the history of Crayola crayons for example yeah S ah, delicious if you love art this will definitely hit the spot now if you're looking for something in nonfiction got you covered Cassia St. Clair's The Secret Lives of Color. Painters need pigment. Pigment is color. Uh, textile creators, uh, artists, are using natural dyes. Where do those colors come from? This book goes through um, color by color with uh, just a page or two on each color. So fascinating, fascinating history, cultural history. Um, who doesn't love color? <laughs> yeah. And speaking of pigment, one particular pigment features in this short novel, Blue Postcards by uh, Douglas Bruton. And that is Eve Klein Blue or International Klein Blue, IKB. It is a particular shade of ultramarine blue that Eve Klein worked with a chemist, uh, Edouard Adam, 
to develop a polyvinyl resin that would allow that vivid shade of blue to um, retain its color, not be dulled by the medium that it was in when, you, when the artist works with it. So Eve Klein is a character in this novel. There are um, several other important characters, just, just a few other important characters, including another man who is the same age as Eve Klein, um, but his life circumstances are much different. Their paths cross and what happens? It's a, uh, also written in fragments. There is a sweetness to this in its philosophical exploration of the meaning of being alive in this world. Uh, and I have one more nonfiction recommendation. I have not read this yet, and I am planning to read it in September. So this is a classic, The Beauty of Everyday Things, and it's by uh, Soetsu Yanagi. Michael Brace is the translator into English. Uh, Yanagi was a uh, Japanese folk craft pioneer with uh, a lot to say about the objects that we use every day. So I am looking forward to this in September. Tell me in the comments down below if you are planning to participate. Do you have books in mind already? Please, please, please let me know. Now, are you asking yourself, what do you mean by art? Okay, let me cover that. What we're talking about here is any form of art, painting, drawing, architecture, sculpture, film, photography, uh, music, dance, theater, crafting, needlework, pretty much anything that you make by hand. Uh, the one thing that we're not talking about under this umbrella of art is literature because all of booktube is about that particular art. So everything else, if you call it art, sure, we're, we're counting that. So that's what I mean by an art readathon. And for prompt number two, if you need an example, here's one. Recently, I went to the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria and one of their exhibits, they had uh, items from their permanent collection. So there was lots of Emily Carr. And then I saw two small pieces of sculpture contained within the same plexiglass uh, box by a pair of famous Canadian lesbian sculptors. It just made me so happy to see their work displayed there together because these women were life partners for nearly 60 years. So the women that I'm talking about are Florence Weil and Frances Loring. They were both born in the United States where they met at art school and they moved to Canada and then lived in Toronto for many years where they had their studio. And in the 1910s and 20s and into the 30s, I think they were the you know, preeminent artists in Canada. Uh, although they aren't so well known now. There have been several biographies written about these women. Uh, I am going to tell you about one that I particularly recommend that came out in 2017. It's called The Girls with Stone Faces, and it's written by Arlene Paré, who is a poet here in Victoria. And this biography is written all in verse. So it's a slim little book and uh, uh, yeah the lives of Francis and Florence and their art. And it's great. So read that and you've participated in 
framed in September. So I hope that you're as excited as I am about this readathon. Uh, let me know if you want more suggestions. Um, you know, what kind of um, art are you interested in? I might be able to give you some specific suggestions. So let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so very much for watching and I hope to see you at Framed in September. Bye for now.